Putin's war in Ukraine is certainly not going as he intended. But on his own front, his dreams may be coming true. That was the thrust of a terrific New York Times article by the paper's Moscow reporters, Valerie Hopkins and Anton Tryonovsky. Valerie joins me now from Moscow. Welcome, Valerie. I, I want to ask you to start by talking about something that I found very interesting in, in reporting you've done before this article, but including this article, uh, which is President Biden sa has said a couple of times, I think, once the body bags start coming back, the Russian people will stop supporting this war or words to that effect. And what you found is that the body bags are coming back, but it is actually increasing the support for the war. Explain what's going on. Well, thank you very much, Fareed, for having me. And um, I wish I didn't have to talk about this with you today, but um, it's true. In my reporting across Russia, what I've found when talking to people, mothers of, of those who, who have been lost or relatives, uh, people are finding that their losses are actually making them support the war even more. They're starting to feel it even more. And of course, the Kremlin has refused to actually release uh, the full statistical data of how many people have, have been killed, how many soldiers have died in this war. Um, you know, they've, they've only released them intermittently, and I believe the last full count was in September at 6,000, while Western intelligence estimates that there have been 200,000 killed and wounded in this war, Russians only. So, uh, of course, many Russians, most Russians don't know the full extent of this, but uh, my reporting and reporting by other colleagues who remain in Russia and who have spoken to, to the mothers and relatives of these dead soldiers find that... Uh, that this makes them support it even more because, you know, they, they, they feel a concrete sense of loss. They do believe uh, they, the propaganda that, that the government has been pushing, not only for the past year, but also before, but it has a really ramped up this year, is that the West is, seeks to destroy Russia. And this is an existential struggle for Russia's survival against the West. And they, they also are increasingly buying the line that, you know, actually the West was preparing an invasion and that Putin was smart uh, to take a preemptive, to preemptively invade Ukraine. It's quite surprising and quite shocking, but, but this is where we are right now, one year in. You talk also about a much broader transformation that is taking place in Russia. I mean, this goes back a long way, the debate between, in Russia between the kind of westernizers and what used to be called the Slavophiles, you know, people who thought Russia's destiny lies with the West and those who said, no, Russia is its own distinct, unique uh, uh, creature. You say that this war has helped almost finally, in a very decisive way, move that debate in one direction, right? Absolutely. Well, as you read in the article, uh, one of the very uh, one of the businessmen closest to very close to President Putin, Konstantin Malafeev, uh, expressed his joy that this war, or or his, mm, he expressed some degree of pleasure. We can say about the fact that this war continues as long as it did. You know, as as you know, uh, initially when this was planned, it was planned as a blitzkrieg. It was they thought they could take Kiev in three days, change the change the government and, and, and just occupy. But instead, you know, this has required a societal transformation. And Konstantin Malafeev, this businessman, said this is great because, you know, if the Blitzkrieg had succeeded, we would still have these liberal elements of our society. But now that the longer it goes on, the more this changes into the society that Putin wants. The more liberals are either silenced or forced to flee, uh, the more free speech is suppressed, and the more... Um, it's possible to, to create educational, cultural institutions and, and even civil society into the type of or organizations and bodies that, that the Kremlin wants to see, which are traditional, conservative, and essentially define themselves as the antithesis to the values that the West professes to stand for. So in a sense, it feels to me like what you're saying, the longer this war goes on, don't expect Russia to feel, you know, that it's, oh my goodness, it's a big mistake. It's actually having the effect of making Russians double down on this anti-Western narrative and anti-Western society. On the one hand, yes, I think, you know, in the near term, 
that's that is the case. Um, but I think you know what we've learned from Russia's experience with other wars. You know, the, the Russian in, the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan was something that that many people were frustrated about and opposed to. But it didn't. It took them years to organize and and to truly be fed up and frustrated. I think a lot of this is actually apathy, uh, and and much of that is due to the fact that the economy has sort of more or less remains normal. But it's possible that, you know, at a certain point that there may there may be some tipping point. It's just how far along that might be. It's really hard to say.